Hello everyone. The title of today's episode is Divine Administration and Empty Telescopes. May we begin with a very bright question. Who are the administrators of the cosmos? In other words, when we look around and we see we are an individual human being among all this cosmic being, who is dictating the administration of the design of those leaves on that tree? And even more interestingly, the design of the face that is looking at that tree. Who are the administrators of the cosmos? And it comes to a sense of you which is present in a moment of experience. Now, divinity is the full awareness of the moment, let us say. That what you find to be divine is not your body or just your body. You are finding everything that is present in your beam of experience and everything that is you're aware of including my voice the room you're in and many other things that are combining to be a moment for you once divinity is the full awareness of the moment we begin to see telescopes are an aspect of the moment trying to see another aspect and not that telescopes are inaccurate telescopes are one of the most efficient and awesome things that mankind has ever made. But we must begin to also learn from our nature of vision. And what that means is regardless of how awesome the technology, we gotta see if we need it or not. Humanity has to make these decisions. And so some great leaders have gone and held certain dams from breaking, but humanity must wake up. And it must wake up by seeing it is up. You are here, you are now, you're experiencing. There isn't, there isn't that much you know, instruction, you know. There isn't that much stuff you need. You're just here, present, and now. Be aware. So we must begin to see that when a telescope is an aspect of the moment and we are from one experience of physicality trying to see through another sense of an experience, of physicality, regardless of the distance, we see it's kind of similar to concentric circles because it's as if every universe that you consider is all being kept in the moment that is aware. So the moment of experience and being is not something man has to always define. It is not something where you need to say, I am this kind of person, you know, because the minute you do, you are chaining yourself to one part of the spectrum. So what that means is, imagine, you know, someone, life putting all the colors there in front of you to draw with, you know, um, but you are saying, no, I only see, you know, for example, the color red, <laughs> you know, I only see, uh, the color black when there's so many other colors. So it's very important for you to see that of course color is an elegance where every color is as beautiful as the whole thing put together. So when life is giving you many options you are choosing how comfortably you want to flow in that state of collective and simultaneous awareness to your dimension of experience or you want to just you know Accept the first words of an infinite book. <laughs> so what that means is when we see there's a sense of eternity, where do we go find eternity? You know? Where is the clue? And we see the clue is in where we are defining it and where we are defining what is temporal. What that means is Sometimes I, I look at society and culture and it's doing its own thing, you know. I'm just on the side that I have my own ideas, but I see there's so many other ideas planned and it's as if history was really his story passed on. So when, when I was introduced to death, I was not shown through a value of life that was real to me because no man has died yet. We must find the significance in what is here. 
And so if you see it as concentric circles, it's as if all the circles are then within a greater circle, you know. So all senses of space and time are within a greater awareness of spa uh, space and time. So what that means is you're, you right now are aware of your other birthdays, of your birthdays before. And you are in, an, in this moment aware. So you begin to see we are shaping this spiraling system of information based on how we choose to be informed. So what that means is ideology is is doing its thing and you must be aware that we are an existential awareness beyond ideas. What that means is when I look at a bench in a park, I'm not the bench, you know, I'm aware I'm not the bench. So similarly, uh, in certain uh, st states of, let's say, natural self-contemplation, when I say natural, so don't worry about it, you know, it will come, you know, just breathe, breathe very mindfully. And you'd see, It's like there never needed to be forgiveness because what was wrong? How could natural design be wrong? The wrongness comes from an image of wanting to be right. So when children are taught and told to be you, this is what good means, this is what bad means, this is what good means, and the kid doesn't have a chance to kind of go in love and kind of realize it, you know, even though you get the chance later, of course, as you live, but it's as if we are being fed not just food as children, we are being fed every movement in the environment, which is this experience. When you begin to see the con concentric circle uh, analogy I used earlier for how consciousness is, is, how do I say, evolving within itself, and through uh, the similar to those concentric circles, there is a hollowness that brings the light at the end of the tunnel. So meaning that these concentric circles uh, are giving an effect where when you're looking at them, instead of you seeing a bigger, you are seeing suddenly they're all the same because it's it's like a well. How would I say it? It's like cylindrical. It's as if it's all the same circle with, with, with greater dimension. You know. Um, so 2D phenomena. So what that means is in what is to a 2D dimension, let's say, an expansion. So what we think is an expanding universe in this dimension, in, the two, in a 2D dimension, in a third dimension is actually, it's void. It's not expanding. It's all the same. So what that means is we got to see multidimensional understanding means you can't just say this one little thing I'm seeing, this infinitely changing world is it. And so that's it. You know, and this is ignorance when we, it's as if we are shaping people's imagination. What that means is I want you to visualize for a second uh, in the future I'm raising my son and what if I begin just telling my son everything? Just, just begin saying everything which he had come here to understand himself. You would see that would be very ignorant, right? So what is the solution? The solution is existential allowance. That regardless of how much we think we figured it out, regardless of how much we think we know, our base platform is learning. What that means is whether you are a criminal or a victim, the base platform is learning. Whether you are the worst person or the best person, the base platform is learning. And learning has an empty quality. That means, all right, it's good, I, I, I heard what you know, now let's see what else you can learn. We were not thrown in darkness. We just forgot we were the entrance and exit to the dark room. It is our vision. It is that ability which opens up greater vision. I've not said it's like it's like um, divine administration is the focus of life. Being aligned beyond image
and boxed senses of space and time, which to the human experience has come the limitations of his apprentice, which is his sensory perception. We can very playfully say that divine administration or divine will, you know, it is how your moment is presented. Do you see? It's as if you don't need to do anything because if the presence is there, you know, it's present. And it is like a river of consciousness which we are an individual drop in. That is why your collective sense of being is the is beyond the inspiration of an individual sense of being. So what I mean by that is if we were to for a moment visualize a river, we would see that to the experience of a drop, you know, let's say man's consciousness compared to the consciousness of the cosmos is a drop, you know. So this drop will see that divine administration is when it becomes aware and it integrates and kind of flows towards the river and just it, it, it finds itself in the river and as it finds itself the river the divine administration is very clear as if no drop ha is alone when it's in the river aware of the river of life let's say you know so very playfully for man, life is flowing than glowing. But in a sense, for the experience of the river, it is a knowing that does not need the drops to question because the drops are not drops. What that means is a liberated being and a realized being, uh, there was an untouchable quality there you know, un unspeakable quality, and so that is, it, it's as if the being was completely sincere in being, you know, and in that there was an awareness to all that could be. So again, I would like to say, the experience of the river is no longer a dream, when the drop has awakened from the drop. You know, it's, it's that moment of awareness where uh, mankind does not need telescopes to play around in the visual uh, playground, but, or sensory playground, But to rather bring all significance to the moment of experience in which the being is wondering about what totality means. And you see, your totality is simply all that is aware of all in a moment. This simplicity is what begins to bloom very profound existential compassion. What that means is the drop is finding itself in the greater river of intelligence. In the greater rivers of greater, uh, we say cosmic intelligence, but it's it's fascinating, you know. So when 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 I, when I'm when Mr. Whitman is speaking about multidimensionality, that does not mean everybody has the same experience of the hierarchy. I mean, there are some similarities, but every individual is their own unique opening, and you know. Uh, you know, and you know, uh, open uh, a, a, is their own unique entrance and exit. You know, into greater states of consciousness. What that means is, uh, this was the beauty. This was what yoga understood. Yoga understood, and the yogi understood that liberation was to no longer stand under anything. We are not standing in a hierarchy. I am not 
a being that is greater than you just because of what is being said and you are not a being greater than me just because what you are saying. We must acknowledge ourselves as existential points of attention, moments of awareness which are considering space and time. And each human being must put an effort into bringing a very great vision of humanity. What that means is let us just visualize uh, out of this 8 billion people uh, a very, very sincere amount or just uh, thinking of how to bring immediately world peace, just immediately an instant solution. You know, they would see that they have to see, look at the skills and potential they have and to contribute as much as they can. And what that means is based on their skills, based on how you have stepped in this life, you will see that your vision of peace well, might not be the same vision as peace as the other peacemakers around in the 8 billion. You know, however, when these peacemakers uh, come together, their separate visions and their unique in, in, uh, inspirations uh, begin to come together and become one, uh, how do I say it, uh, one visible effort. You know, it's as if different streams of effort come and they become a great flow. You know, it's as if all the rivers find the ocean. You know, the fingers remember the palm that was holding the world. I would like to share a quote which I find this intuitively. It's, it needs to be presented. What that means is the moment is playfully expressing, regardless of the ideology of my individually considered body or body of thought. The quote is by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, a very realized and very cool being, you know, I think his laugh is, will always be remembered. <laughs> Best part of his speech is that. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi says, Fulfillment is structured in achievement. Achievement is structured in action. Action is structured in thinking. Thinking is structured in knowledge. Knowledge is structured in consciousness. What that means is to think that you are thinking about things and you're a thinker is a certain intensity of interpreting your moment of experience. But once you begin to see where thoughts come from, they are coming from the source of knowledge and the source of knowledge is your direct experience. That is your origin of awareness. What that means is I was reading books and I'm, for a moment I'm like, why am I reading books? And suddenly the books fell from my hands, you know. I had to pick them up again, but you know. <laughs> so we will see all knowledge is going to consciousness because you are born into an awareness which then has the possibility through a sense of existential responsibility and natural acceptance of expression uh, move beyond systematic hierarchy and be the inspiration of how hierarchy must be introduced. What that means is there's no turf wars here. We are becoming aware of the nature of space and time and that means your direct experience is important. So fulfillment comes from knowing consciousness. Achievement comes from an awareness as consciousness. Action comes from an awareness as consciousness. Thinking comes from an awareness as consciousness. Knowledge comes from an awareness as consciousness. Consciousness doesn't come from anywhere. 
And this is where Mr. Within would like to see uh, the pilots of consciousness uh, navigating towards this eleva elevation of depth. You know, what that means is the human being uh, might not have all these cool alien technologies that we see in Hollywood movies, but we have an ability to be aware of spectrum, and we have an ability to be a natural being, and we have an ability to be very playful and also serious based on the requirement of what needs to be done in the moment. What that means is before I was thinking my life had to be something where it had to be planned, and the better the plan, the better it was. So I went and sought knowledge, but I realized the planning all came to how, I, how my effort was, was uh, allowed in the present moment, you know. So I began to see in my lifestyle, once I trusted life, the style was no longer significant. So life began flowing and it's be, it, it was as if that moment where if you've been in a jacuzzi your whole life in regards to your conditioning and the ideas you've known, suddenly I just got out of the jacuzzi and I just stood there, you know. And it was, you know, it was, it was a cold breeze. <laughs> What that means is, I began to realize that my real eyes, if they were defined to me, they were not absolute. What definition is always bound. What that means is if the individual tries to uh, seek truth through another individual, it will still see the reality is individual. But if an individual tries to seek uh, reality from a collective, uh, it would see that it would look at the individuals who were aware as their collective. And this is why in, this, I found it to be very beautiful in many Vedic traditions where the Guru passed down. There was divine transmission. And divine transmission simply meant that they were not passing on, you know, what we may try to visualize in our, you know, sci-fi and fantasy movies. But it, it, it was... It was a communication that made the being aware that all of reality was a communication. So an awareness of the projection was not lost. What that means is being aware as consciousness. So consciousness is absolute consciousness. But if you are thinking, there is a boundary. You know. Because you're still putting the knowledge as the void. But you must see your thoughts are coming from the knowledge you already have within you innately. So the simplicity must come in your sincerity to acknowledge yourself honestly. You know? Which was something where if, if I, you know, I, I could not even understand at some point in my life. What that means is many of us are thinking what is happening to us is because of something external. But once you see that it can also be from something internal, what that means is the way you're looking at it is suggesting how the reality is looking at you. We must smile. For regardless of how we struggle, just be conscious of the light of intelligence you're present in. And the telescope was empty not because of the telescope but rather because your eyes were beyond all that could be above you know so before you considered the shape of the container you knew you could not be contained and that is when chaos and order are truly dancing within an existential observance that is the poetry of omniscience You are the divine administrator, for you are the presence of all that is present in this moment. When Meister Eckhart said, the same eyes that I, I see God are the same eyes that God sees me, that means the creator view and the creation view are simultaneously present. And the observer of this, and that which is aware, begins to see we can choose to make ourselves into a sense of self we can choose to become excellent clay masters but 
we know that we're not the clay and if we get bored we immediately let our attention go. You know, so we must become mindful. We must see that every moment is uh, 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 there's many possibilities of uh, impossibility. You know, there's many things, many many routes. But we can to see as it all comes here, you mature in the way you have walked in this life. You suddenly see every step you've taken has not been foolish, has not been stupid, has not been valueless. Everything you've done, everything you've been gravitated to, you will find it is administered. In, in not a way that you understand, it's just natural. It's as if the river is there, you know. So your consciousness, if you keep it individual, it is still bound to a requirement of a certain world. But if you trust the moment, as the wisdom of the sage has said, you would see love would be beyond the very of death. And we can take that same veil, you know, and, you know, clean up that telescope, you know, but also be aware who's really looking through it. It's the cosmos looking back at itself. You know? <laughs> and so, of course, be very playful because multidimensionality is something that is coming into people's experiences more and it must be, it must be received playfully because that is where you have a complete existential allowance to be all that is being done. Much blessings and understanding.